All right, guys. This guy. This guy. Kasim Soleimani, pronounced Sime Solima. 11 March 1957 to 3 January 2020. I was commissioned in the United States Naval Academy as a naval officer. I was an ensign in the United States Navy May 24, 2002. So this guy, he was an Iranian major general in the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC. And from 1998, that was the year I went into the Naval Academy. The year I, I raised my hand and said I swore an oath to support and defend this country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. This guy, from 1998 until his death, commander of the Quds Force, a division primarily responsible for the extraterritorial, military, and clandestine operations. Soleimani began his military career at the start of the Iran-Iraq War during the 80s, eventually commanding the 41st Division, later involved in extraterritorial operations, providing military assistance to Hezbollah. Hezbollah. You guys know what Hezbollah is? Hezbollah. In Lebanon. 2012, Soleimani helped bolster the Bashir al-Assad government, a key Iranian ally, ally, can't English today, during its operations in the Syrian civil war, and helped to plan Russian military intervention in Syria. Soleimani also was a commander of the combined Iraqi government and the Shia militia. You guys know about the, the Sunnis and Shias, right? Different kinds of Muslims, slightly different beliefs. So he was part of the Shia militia that advanced against ISIL, I-S-I-L, not ISIS, but I-S-I-L, the fluffy bunny, 2014-2015. Soleimani was one of the first to support the Kurds, providing them with arms. What does that mean? Providing them with weaponry to kill American soldiers and coalition soldiers and, and sailors, airmen, and Marines. He was personally listed as a terrorist by the EU and the US. He led the Kuds, is considered a terrorist organization by Canada, Saudi, Bahrain, and also U.S. of A. He was killed on January 3rd, 2020, in Baghdad, proved by President Trump on the grounds that he posed an imminent threat to American lives. Let's scroll down here on his Wikipedia page. And you can see I'm not making this up. He joined the Revolutionary Guard in 1979 following the Iranian Revolution. When the Shah of Iran fall, or fell and Ayatollah Khomeini took power. So reportedly his training was minimal, but he advanced rapidly. There's a picture of him receiving a medal from the Supreme Leader Ayatollah Khomeini. Let's see. 22nd of September 1980, when Saddam Hussein launched an invasion of Iran, setting off the Iran Iraq War. Soleimani joined the battlefield serving as a leader of a military company consisting of men from Kerman whom he assembled and trained. He quickly earned a reputation for bravery, rose through the ranks because of his role in successful operations and retaking the lands Iraq had occupied, eventually becoming the commander of the 41st Tharhala Division while still in his 20s. 20 years old. When I was 20 years old, I was here in Florida attending training chasing the female of the species and not doing exactly the things that I should have been but this guy was being groomed from the start so he was injured he was actually uh, leading the 
Irregular warfare missions deep inside Iraq carried out by the Ramadan headquarters. So he worked with the Kurdish Iraqi leaders and the Shia, both of which were opposed to Saddam Hussein. So basically, we supported this guy to an extent. After the war, during the 90s, he was an IRGC commander in Kerman province, close to Afghanistan. So we know about Afghanistan, the opium fields, travel to Turkey, and then on to Europe. So he quickly gained a reputation as a drug trafficker. You know what that is? A drug dealer, a pimp, a human piece of garbage, trafficking drugs to the rest of the world. There I said it. So during some student revolt in Tehran, Soleimani was one of the IRGC officers who signed a letter to Muhammad Khatami. He said if Khatami did not crush the student rebellion, the military would and also might launch a coup against Khatami. So they're saying between 97 and 98, he took over as the IRGC's coup's force. Let's see. Following the attacks of 9-11, Senior U.S. State Department official Ryan Crocker flew to Geneva to meet with Iranian diplomats who were under the direction of Soleimani with the purpose of co collaborating to destroy the Taliban. This collaboration was instrumental in defining the targets of bombing operations in Afghanistan and capturing key Al-Qaeda operatives. But abruptly, ended in January 2002 when George W. Bush named Iran as part of the Axis of Evil. So Soleimani kept on strengthening the relationship between his Quds force and Hezbollah. So when he was appointed, he was supported the latter by sending operatives to retake southern Lebanon. 2019, he said he was in Lebanon during the 2006 Israel Hezbollah war to oversee the conflict. So he's part of the Syrian civil war. And what else? You guys get the idea. Orchestration and military escalation. Um, according to Reuters, he was uh, unfurled a map of Syria to explain to his Russian hosts how their Bashir al-Assad can be turned into victory. Aleppo. So this guy is, is, is not a good guy. And it's amazing to me, as a military veteran, as an American citizen, that this guy, people are protesting that this guy was taken out. That it's going to be a somehow an act of war. Guess what? The President of the United States has the power to send people in the harm's way for up to 60 days, according to the War Powers Act. He has 48 hours to inform Congress, which he did. Whether you don't like it because it was done via Twitter or whatever, he still informed the Congress. So he met the criteria. But the fact that they don't like him as a person, they say, okay, You've gone outside the situation, you've gone outside of our interests, you've gone outside of our purview. It is what it is. It's, it's, it's sad. So Soleimani also played a key role in Iran against ISIS in Iraq. So it's really sad. So he was part of the linchpin bringing Kurdish and Shia forces together. Uh, the 2014 Iraqi city of Amarilli to work with Iraqi forces to push back militants from ISIL. So he fought with us. But that's what happens. Um, I know, I'm trying to find the part where it talks about the EFPs. Um, so if you know about the explosive form penetrators, this is one of the guys who engineered that. These are designed to punch through uh, tank armor and really highly up armored vehicles to kill military personnel.
some politics. He became, he signed a letter to Katami. Um, blah, 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 blah. So his father was a farmer who died in 2017. His mother, Fatama, died in 2013. He had siblings, five sisters, and one brother. So he practiced karate. He was a fitness trainer in his youth. He has four kids. Described as having a calm presence. So in 2007, he was part of the, two, the uh, UN Security Council resolution for sanctions, along with Bashir al-Assad and many of the Syrian officials. So, killed on 3 January 2020, around 1 a.m. local time, by missiles shot from American drones which targeted his convoy near Baghdad International Airport, or BIOP. So those that were there know about BIOP, they know about the Green Zone, they know about the area. So <clears throat> he just left his plane, which arrived in Iraq from Lebanon or Syria. His body was identified using a ring he wore on his finger, with DNA confirmation still pending. Also with him were four members of the Popular Mobilization Forces, including Abu Mahdi al muhandis the Iraq Iranian military commander who headed the PMF. Iraqi Prime Minister Smadi said Soleimani was bringing Iran's response to a letter that Iraq had sent out on behalf of Saudi Arabia in order to ease tensions between the two countries in the region. Pentagon basically said they focused on his past actions and as a deterrent to future action. So we know he followed attacks on the American Embassy in Baghdad by supporters of the Iran-backed Shia militia and the 2019 K-1 air base attack. So the DOD says the strike was carried out at the direction of the President, Commander-in-Chief and asserted that Soleimani had been planning further attacks on American diplomats and military personnel and had approved attacks on the American Embassy in Baghdad in response to U.S. airstrikes in Syria. So, let that sink in for a minute. This guy was going to kill American citizens, American personnel, American military, American contractors. This guy was ready to take out whoever he needed to take out because it doesn't matter when you're involved in terrorism, you don't care who you hurt. So they're claiming he has thousands of mourners and they're chanting death to America, death to Israel. So more to follow. There will be many more things that come out of this. This will not be over very quickly. So he's a hero and a martyr to Iran. He was the first man to be honored with a multi-city funeral. His funeral was the second largest after the Ruola Khomeini. Although some say there are many Iranians that have anger at the Iranian National Guard and the boycott of the funeral. So, hope this provides some facts, hope this provides some information. It's not political. I'm literally reading off the Wikipedia page, although some might say the Wikipedia is not a scholarly source, but you can do your own research and I wish you guys the peace of mind that when bad people do bad things we tend to do the right thing and for the most part we don't always get it right but this guy was a grade a a1 piece of garbage who was responsible for many of the people that i served with being maimed disfigured killed bombed blown up And he planned more attacks. This guy is a complete waste of life. And he deserves to burn in hell for the rest of his unnatural life. So, I'm thankful that we have a president who took that action and took people like this out. Granted, it wasn't him personally, but it was our great, brave men and women, our military personnel, that got the intel on this guy and took him out.
So sleep better at night knowing the sky will not hurt another American citizen. So I apologize if this offends anybody. I apologize if this is uh, controversial. But this guy killed innocent people. Men, women, and children. So I appreciate you guys watching. I, I'm thankful for you guys' attention. And we'll see you guys in the next video.